Welcome everyone. Today we will learn how to implement MongoDB query full test in a .NET API. So go to MongoDB Atlas to create a new instance in the cloud. I have an account, so you need to create an account and log in. In the overview page, click the create button to add a new cluster. Select the T, I'll select the free T for the more purposes. Define the name, the cloud provider and the region. I'll select the default, click create deployment. We'll connect to the cluster. So to do that, we'll create a new database user, define an username, and I'll keep the random password. Click the create database user button. Let's choose a connection method. Connect the application using the csha.net driver with the latest version. We need to install this driver and we'll copy the connection string. So let's copy it out and click done. So go to Visual Studio and as a prerequisite, we'll use a simple clean architecture scheme. I'll provide the link about what is clean architecture in the description below. So in the API, let's go to the app settings.json and add the connection string section at a MongoDB value, place the connection string. So in the persistence ledger, we'll install the MongoDB driver to implement the query filters. So right click and open a new terminal, type .NET at package mongodb.driver so we have the nugget package installed in this project let's expand the persistence layer and go to the database service class let's rename it as mongo repo get rid of this method add a constructor to connect with the mongodb instance so in yet the i configuration interface to access the connection stream values so we need to install this package, define the name of the I configuration interface and define a product collection variable. The idea is to filter products based on some filters that we will create. So add a product collection and call Mongo client from the Nugget package to create a new client and pass the connection stream. So call configuration that get connection stream and pass the name of the key. Then we'll get the database by passing the name, which will be shop, and then get the collection from that database by passing the type of the collection, which will be a product class and the name itself. So go and define this product collection in the domain layer. So expand the domain project and remove the entities folder, add a new folder called collections, and add some properties for this product class. First one will be the ID. We'll show the representation from the object ID from MongoDB. So add this BASON presentation attribute. We need to install the MongoDB.BASON package called BASON type .object ID, which is the type of the ID for the MongoDB ID. Add a property name, brand, array of colors, and finally, at a price property. Go back and add the reference to the collection. Create a new field for this product collection and add a method to filter the products based on a detail. So define an asynchronous method that will return a collection of products. We'll receive a product filter DTO class which contains the filters. Define this DTO in the application project at a new folder called DTOs. Create a class and let me copy these properties from the product collection. We'll apply some filters based on the name. We'll pass a list of brands. We'll pass a list of colors to take into account into the filter. And we'll pass an array to define a price range. Go back to the Mongo repository add the reference and create a new builder property that basically we will build the filter definition. So add the builders of type product and access the filter definition builder. Let me collapse the solution explorer to focus on the creation of the filter. So add a new property for the filter definition. Let's mark this detail as nullable because if filter is null, we will just return simple builder that empty. We will not apply any filter. Otherwise, let's add the 
build test for each field. So the first one will be for the name. So if filtered that name is null, we just simply return an empty builder. Otherwise, we will add the expected filter. So call builder that we get will create a regular expression to check if the name contains a string filter. So at the regular expression based on the main property, then add a new based on regular expression by passing the string value from the filter and add an option this i character to ignore the case add this operator to concatenate multiple filters the second one will be to check if there is any brand in the filter if there's any brand we'll apply a string in filter that basically will check if a brand is included in the string array so for this filter we need to, to define which field to filter there is brand and then define a string or regular expression to apply this string in filter so call filter that brands and will select the value and transform to a new string or regular expression based on this value if the brands filter is empty we will just return filter that empty the next filter is for the colors so let me copy the brands filter and we'll check if there is any color but in this case we will apply a different filter any string in to check if there is any color in the string array based on filter that colors otherwise we will create a new empty filter and finally apply the last filter which is price range so we'll check if this filter that count is equal to two it indicates that it contains a minimum range value and a maximum one so if the price range contains two elements we'll apply two filters the first one will be builder that greater than equal based on the price if the price is greater than equal of the minimum range value which is filter that price range in the initial position and apply the second filter when the price is less than or equal that filter that price range in the second position if there is no any price range we will just return builder that empty and that's it we create the, the filter definition and finally we'll call the product collection that find function we pass in the filter definition and transform to an asynchronous list that's it let's copy the method signature to add it into the contract set the name of the interface as imongo repo go to the contract and copy the method signature it's time to test this filter implementation so go to the api open the user controller let's rename it as product controller remove the http get method and add a constructor to inject the imongo repo interface add a field and add a new http post method to return a list of products let's name it as filter and we'll receive from body the product filter dto and we'll just simply return mongo repo that filter products by passing the dto so before testing the api let's populate the collection with some documents so here in this notepad i have three products let me copy and go to mongodb atlas in the deployment section click database click browse collections from the cluster already created we don't have any database so click create database define the name which will be the same as defined in the mongo repo shop and the collection product define the collection name let's ignore additional preferences click create so we have the collection click in this insert document button select the json view and copy these three products click insert so far so good go back to visual studio go to the product controller and let's define this detail as nullable run the project test the endpoint with swagger so we'll check when the DTO is null, 
it will return all the documents from the collection. We have the three products already added. Now test each filter. Let me copy the filters. Let's pass brands, colors, and price range as empty arrays to skip these filters. So test the name filter at SH and click execute. And you can see we have two products. Both products contain the filter name value. Now test the brand's filter, filter but by this brand, click execute, and we just have only one product based on the brand, but you can add multiple brands to the filter. At a second brand, we have two products. Let's check if the black color is included in any product. So you can add this black color into the filters and it will return the same two products as you can see. Let's change as red, just return one product that contains the red color. And finally, let's keep the black to return two products. Let's test the price range at the minimum and a maximum value. Click execute. We have one product based on the price range. Let's increment the maximum value to include a second product. As you can see, the price range is working fine. So in this demo, we've learned how to implement MongoDB query filters in a .NET API.